Hey, what's up YouTube? I just want to shoot a quick video to show you guys a little trick, a uh, little industry secret. Um, it's how you get paint primer to stick to polypropylene or polyethylene. That also includes HDPE, which is high density polyethylene, um, LDPE, low density polyethylene. Uh, the, the major difficulty that people have getting a paint or a primer to stick is usually caused by the mold release agent that's used when the product is formed. Um, it's, uh, it's a very slippery, um, soapy type of, uh, soapy, oily type of uh, lubricant that allows it to release from the mold so that it doesn't get stuck. Um, well, obviously you can imagine that causes a lot of difficulty to get paint or primer to stick to that because it just acts like a barrier between that paint and the substrate. Um, I've already gone through the steps uh, on this one. This is kind of a, a goof up that uh, someone brought me. Um, I'm kind of having to work backwards a little bit. Uh, but basically, uh, the first step is to scuff the item. Um, you know, it's, it's everybody's preference if you want to use 400 grit, 600 grit. Uh, generally don't go much closer than 400 on polypropylene because you're going to see the scratches through the primer which is never good um, so this has already been cleaned degreased it's already been scuffed and as you can see it's already been painted once they attempted it um, obviously it didn't stick that's why I'm having to go through the process um, so at this point I'm going to take you through the flame treatment and uh, the degreasing application specifically for that mold release agent. Um, so what you're gonna need is uh, some sort of propane torch. Um, something that's, I, I like the, the clicker automatic lighter style because you're gonna be turning it on, turning it off, turning it on, turning it off, and you don't wanna have to have a lighter in your hand constantly. It just makes it take a little bit longer. Um, so here we go, uh, go ahead and start that up. You wanna keep your flame pretty low. Obviously you don't wanna melt your products, um, so kind of hard to show you but uh, you just gently move the flame around on your item back and forth don't hang out in one place too long you don't want to scorch the plastic it's very easy to melt especially with an item like this it's super thin um, but what you're looking for and it's almost impossible to get on video is you'll kind of see a little bit of a wet look come back to the plastic for just a moment and what that is is the actual mold release coming to the surface so the next step is to take some alcohol spray it on there get yourself a paper towel and just wipe that off um, and essentially what you're doing is you're you're just opening up the pores of the plastic you're forcing that mold release agent to the surface and then you're stripping it away with the alcohol um, if you do that correctly um, I'm not going to guarantee that it's going to work, but 99 times out of 100, you're going to get a really strong bond on your plastic. Um, don't try to hurry through the process and scuff it up and then try to paint it because it's not going to stick. Uh, all you're doing is driving that mold release agent deeper into the substrate by scuffing it, right? Without removing it, it's never going to stick. So, again, Keep your flame moving. Don't hang out in one place too long. Look for that little wet type of uh, sheen that's gonna come back for just a quick second. It's not gonna get wet looking, but it's gonna have that moisture on the surface type of look. Get it with your alcohol. That's gonna cut through it and take it right off. So, I hope this helps. I. Uh, I'll be coming to you with some other types of uh, little quick tips and tricks. Um, I, I'm a hydrographics processor. I do camo dipping, wood grain, carbon fiber, things like that. So this is my everyday. Um, but you know, maybe you guys have a, a set of patio chairs that are looking kind of old and oxidized and you just want to put a new color on it. It's a great way to get paint to stick to polypropylene or polyethylene, which is usually what chairs are made out of. Um, Go ahead and hit that like button down below, hit subscribe, and be looking for more videos in the future. Peace out. 
Hey guys, I just wanted to add one more quick little side note. Um, it's common sense stuff. Hopefully, I wouldn't have to tell you this normally, but like, let's think about this for a second. If you're working in a paint shop with fumes everywhere, um, open flame, paint fumes, gas fumes, you name it, that's a recipe to blow yourself up, so don't be dumb. Um, as you can see, my shop is wide open. I've got the door open, I've got my turbo fan circulating air over there in the corner. Um, I always play it safe. I've got my spray booth. Every time I fire the spray booth up, the door's open. Um, I don't like neurological disorders, so I try to keep myself as safe as possible. Uh, normally I would wear a mask to do this, but since it's really hard to communicate and hear my voice through a mask, I can't wear one. Um, uh, another thing, obviously, you're using a torch with alcohol um, and that's just regular rubbing alcohol if I didn't mention that before um, there will be a little bit left over after you wipe it um, be careful when you go to torch it the next time because obviously it's gonna light on fire uh, just be prepared to blow that out um, or just the safest way would just be to go ahead and wait till it's all evaporated um, again you know it, it's gonna help a lot I'm not going to guarantee you that it's going to work because who knows how that part's been handled before. Um, a lot of times, you know, with plastic, uh, when things get oxidized, people will put that plastic protect, you know, that renew, plastic renew stuff. And that stuff is terrible when it comes to getting paint to stick afterward because it's, it's engineered to soak way down in there and give it that glossy, oily look again. So it's pretty tough sometimes to get that off um, I'll generally start if I know it's been uh, if I know it's been applied in the past I'll generally start the process with a commercial degreasing agent something like um, oh what is it that the green stuff um, you can pick it up at Harbor Freight it's just commercial degreaser um, warm water throw it in a bucket mix it around, let it sit for a while, come back with a brush and scrub it a little bit, let it soak some more. Um, and that helps get a large part of that off. Uh, it's not gonna get it all off, but that's what the flame treatment's gonna help you out with. So again, I hope this helps. Uh, I wish you luck with your project. Um, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. Uh, my name is Seth and this has been a noble effort. God bless.